I need some quarter inch cherry plywood for a project that I'm starting, but I don't have any. I want to reface this cabinet in our powder room, you know, replace the doors and these top panels and the edge trim. This is probably 40 years old, original to the house, and I want to make it match the cherry cabinets in the kitchen. So I want to make flat panel doors like these. Back when I made those kitchen cabinets four years ago, I went out and got a whole bunch of nice cherry plywood, but I just don't have any left. I went looking and I could just find a few scraps. And since I need less than about two square feet, I just thought it'd be fun to try making some. I like making plans. I use SketchUp a lot to make 3D CAD drawings that I then use in the shop. I don't always follow them, but I like to have them. But in this case, I just got some scribbles. I drew three boxes, one indicating the top panel and one indicating the two doors. And then I noted the four measurements that I need and that's really it. Afterwards, I drew out one of the doors on this plywood just to give me an idea for the rails and styles. And I've noted down what I need for that. And that's enough that I can figure out the rest here in the shop as I build it. I actually took a moment and dismounted one of the current vanity doors just to show how that lines up right on this pattern that I've got here. But I'm gonna have much bigger rails and styles on the new one. So it, it does confirm that I got the size right. I've started to prep some stock for the rails and styles and I have a long piece for the top, but we're not really gonna focus on that. This is the material that I was planning to turn into veneer. So yeah, the focus of this video is making these pieces of cherry plywood that I need for the middle panel on my door. To start with, I've got this piece of plywood underlayment. It's about 3 16 of an inch thick. So I'm gonna want a piece of veneer for the outside of the panel, but also for the inside of the panel, because for one thing, you're gonna see it when you open the door, but it's also better structurally to put the same thing on both sides. The veneer that I end up with needs to not be super thick. I want, ideally, I want some veneers that are less than an eighth of an inch, more like a 16 of an inch thick, so that I don't end up with a massive thick piece of plywood. To start with, I wanna make this more manageable by ripping it down to two pieces that are about 12 inches by 14 inches. My big bandsaw is great for resawing, but I've never done anything quite this thin, and I don't always get the best finish, and I don't have a thickness sander. So I'm going to experiment. I'm going to try, but I might fall back to something else. Just over a sixteenth in thickness. So let's see how it turns out. Yeah, that's a nope. It seemed like it was going well, just really slow, but either it's not tuned perfectly or more likely the blade's a bit on the dull side or, or maybe that's just too thin, but Really curve too, but on to step two. Now I've ripped thin stuff on the table saw before. I even need a special jig for it, but this is pretty thin. I've got it set to just about a hair under an eighth of an inch, and this is pretty tall, but we're gonna try the run it through, flip it over, run it through, flip it over thing. And uh, curious how, uh, how smooth a finish I can get. This is a combination blade that might be too deep a cut to start with, we'll see. So a lot of burning on that, and I think it's hard to keep perfectly in line. My, um, my splitter, I think, shifted because it got jammed partway through, and then I had to finish it on the bandsaw, so, but I can really see where I had to stop the blade at one point, and let's try this again. So here's the first one from the bandsaw where it was either too thin or whatever. And then I moved over to the table saw and the first one did not work out. I had some trouble with my splitter, but still it's not terrible. It's just for this part here where it's, uh, I don't know if you can actually see it. It's just I had to stop the cut. And then here are the next two and yeah, they look a bit burnt, but these are pretty flat and that should sand out without too much fuss. So these two I can use and I can use part of this also. So let's do it some more. So it's been a moment. So I blew the breaker twice and I'm currently swapping out the blade. The issue is there's a little bit of uh, movement in the wood. So I've been trying to do it 
in one cut. So like one cut, flip it and do another cut instead of multiple because the wood is bending into the blade. But that was overloading things. And like I said, I blew the breaker twice. This blade is gummed up. So I'm gonna try swapping out to my ripping blade, which I probably should have done in the first place and try again. This is a 110 motor, so probably uh, if I'd had a 220, it might've gone better. But yeah, this blade was definitely getting gummed up with the load that I'm putting on it. Ripping blade should cut better. Unfortunately, this is, this is a full kerf, so it's gonna be using up a bit more wood, but I will gladly pay that price if I get a better cut. Okay, I made it. Got all the pieces that I need and I got two saw blades that I definitely need to clean pitch off of now. Switching from the combination to the ripping blade was definitely a smart move, but I was also definitely really pushing my table saw to the limit. I have a two horsepower motor, you know, 120 volt. Uh, I would think if I had a three or five horsepower motor on my table saw, it might have powered through easily more easily. Um, I still I still was pushing it to the full depth because I really didn't want to have to do like four cuts because it was pinching up and just doing it with two managed to make it work. There's still a, a fair bit of burning but I have one eighth inch thick pieces so there should be plenty of wood here to allow for sanding. And of course it's cherry, you know, cherry will burn if you look at it the wrong way. I need two for each panel. So that's one, that's the back side, that's the next panel. That's the back side, and then I still have a couple extra pieces. So this was my practice piece. I took one of the panels, glued some veneer on it, and it seemed to work. So let me show you what I figured out for myself. I've got two pieces of veneer, and I want them to go together like this. So I need to joint these edges so that they are tight. And they're thick enough that I'm just going to use the joiner for that. And they make a nice tight joint now. I'm going to use some painter's tape and put it on one side and then stretch it over the other so that it will, the tape can act as a bit of a clamp to hold these two together. And one more piece right down the seam. Make sure there is good adhesion all along. And now I can flip it over and I can put a bead of glue in there. But first, let's get everything else ready. I'm using the table itself as a flat clamping surface, but I am also putting calls down so that I can uh, get a clamp underneath. And this piece is going to go here. I'll lift this up and I'll just run a bead right down the middle. And that can go like that. And then let's just spread out lots of glue. I'm using regular wood glue for this. You could use contact cement. Of course, you know, there's lots of things you could do. More than one way to do it. I have to move quickly here because you get about 10 or 11 minutes before the glue starts getting tacky. And I'm putting glue on both surfaces. And yes, a vacuum bag would be really good. Haven't got one yet. Take this. And hopefully that's enough clamps to keep it flat. And after that dried, I repeated the process twice more. So I've got the two panels that I need. So I got my original thin plywood core with a bit of cherry on this side and a bit of cherry on that side so that I have some nice cherry plywood and we'll deal with these burn marks next. It's currently about a half inch thick. And if I bring them over to my cast iron table saw, it's pretty flat. Maybe a tiny bit of rock on the one side. Now next I want to deal with these burn marks. Now I could sand them off by hand, you know, use the random orbit sander. You could use a hand plane. What would really be nice would be a thickness sander, which I don't have yet, because then you could just run them through, but I'm going to use my planer. It's risky, I know, but I do have over an eighth of an inch on either side. I'm going to use the planer taking super, super light passes, which uh, should do it quickly. 
So my first planer cut was actually a little bit heavier than I had anticipated, but it still worked out in the end. And then I took it to the joiner and the table saw to clean it up. And I've got two quite nice cherry panels that I can use for my doors. I actually planed them more than the bare minimum because I wanted them a bit thinner. So they are currently just a hair under three eighths of an inch thick. And that is some nice looking grain on this plywood. So now let's turn all this into some doors. Okay, I'm not going to skip all the details. These are not these are not conventional raised panel doors with plywood. You don't really have to allow for wood movement. So what I do is I make a wooden frame. I used dowels for this and then I cut a rabbit in the back. And then the plywood fits into that rabbit. Gives me a nice flat panel on the back on the inside of the door and your basic raised panel shaker style on the front. Put a bead of glue in the corner here. It's always a balancing act because I don't want any glue to squeeze out, but you want enough glue to do the job. And then we got a whole bunch of this. And three coats of finish and a couple of days later, here we are. So I got my two shaker style doors with a flat panel center and solid cherry on the outside and this is that plywood that I made. The two doors are sort of going to look like that and then a solid panel across the top something like this. Off camera I made some more veneer into thin strips and I put finish on that and, and then up here in the powder room those strips are going to go on either side to cover up the old wood. I sanded that down with some 80 grit to rough it up. Same with the back of these. And then I'm just going to use some five minute epoxy because I'm not really sure wood glue is going to work because there's still going to be traces of finish and tack it in with some half inch brads. These are 23 gauge pins and they're so small they're just going to be disappearing and normally this is in shadows anyways. I've got lots of lights on it right now. So here for instance is one of the strips. I take the strip and on the back I scraped off a bit of the finish that I had and then this was the center post in the front of the cabinet and I took that and I this is a little bit of vinyl and I cut that off and I spread some five minute epoxy and then I just pinned that to it. So now this is what it used to look like and now this is the new face of what it's going to look like. This particular piece goes in the center of the cabinet so it'll fit between where the two doors comes together so it'll be almost invisible but still want to make it look good. I'm going to skip over the rest of the cabinet installation. This video isn't really about that. This video is about making the cherry plywood and having fun doing that and I just reviewed that footage <laughs> of the of what I was doing in there and it is so tight trying to film in a tiny little powder room trying to fit the camera in the corner trying to get some lighting. I'm not really set up for it but I know you want to see the end result. You want to see the finished product so let's skip to the end. And here's my completed cabinet reface. I got a solid piece of cherry on the top and I got the two flat panel doors on the side. The inside of the doors is complete cherry top to bottom and it's nice and flush. I bought the soft close hinges at Lee Valley which are really nice. These black pulls are also from Lee Valley. I, I use these on a number of other cabinets in my house so I like to have that consistent look. The stop in the middle was refaced with a bit of thin cherry just like the two side pieces were and there we go. I think it looks great. It's a huge improvement and I'm very happy with it. So if hacking cabinets is something you're interested in, I'll put a playlist up there to my kitchen build where I took basic IKEA cabinets and built my own custom cherry fronts for them. But otherwise, that's it for now. We'll see you next time. Mm -hmm.